when you PCR and electrophoresis it, everyone, what happens is with a sample, you end up with bands like this. Now the question, does anyone know why you would see multiple bands? It's typically for a DNA sample, you don't just see one band, you see multiple bands. Does anyone know why? Has anyone learned about PCR at school? Okay, then you wouldn't know why. The reason is, before the actual PCR process, something else that's in the test tube are these little restriction enzymes that are going to cut the DNA at multiple sites, right? So when you have a sample, for example, that looks like this, restriction enzymes will cut it into a little fragment like this, another fragment like this, and another fragment like that, okay? And then that's going to be amplified and each fragment will represent one band. Does that make sense to us? Okay, so each individual fragment will be subject to the whole uh, 95, 55, 72 degrees of primers to amplify themselves. So what you end up seeing, you have a look, this is an image. Does everyone see how many bands we can see for each individual? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As you can see, the DNA has been cut at multiple sites, and all the sites have been amplified, and now they're accumulating in that well. Okay? Very good. Any questions? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we actually put them into the test tube, and then we build them to cut the DNA at specific sites. So it could be a cytosine or a thymine or an adenine, for example. Does that make sense, Bill? Yeah. Good. Any other questions at all? Yes. Yeah, it's because if we don't cut them, we don't get actually get much information. Because you only get one band of information. Does that make sense? But if we cut it at multiple sites, for one sample, you get 10 different bands. And then we can compare those 10 bands with another suspect or another individual, and if those 10 bands match, we can be certainly sure that is an individual or culprit of crime scene. Okay? Yes? So do these bands just indicate the molecular mass? Yeah, so the, the location that the bands end up in is dependent on the molecular mass of size. That's it. Okay? Very good. So here's an example, right? So we're looking at a bird's eye view electrophoresis here. You can see samples one, two, three, and four. And as everyone notes that those are unique samples for each individual, right? And remember, the multiple bands are because restriction enzymes have cut the DNA at multiple different sites. Now, if we get a crime scene sample and we notice that there is a fragment here, here, actually, Let's say this is the sample from the crime scene. And we've got suspects two, three, and four that are potentially suspects. Based on this genetic testing, who is clearly the suspect? Two. See how easy that is? Right? But imagine if we had one band like that and another individual had this band. It's very common for many individuals to have similar sized DNA, right? And you could actually end up with another individual also having that same band. So the point being, these restriction enzymes break the DNA into multiple little fragments to provide a fingerprint. Does everyone see that? A unique set of bands for every single individual. And hence why this is also known as DNA fingerprint analysis. Okay, so what you just saw here, everyone, is DNA profile. It consists of two steps. What are the two steps? PCR and electrophoresis. And DNA profiling is also known as DNA fingerprint analysis. Does that make sense? Very good. Good job. Now, we'll go through a slightly, not harder case, but we'll go through an example question. Who's the father of this child? Let's say you're the geneticist that's been called into a court case. And you receive these results and you're asked to interpret it by the judge. Who is the father of that child and why? Neither? 
one or two? Or is it eight? Did you say the word things? What did you call it? The missing bands? Very good. Okay, so these are what we call bands. And so you're saying the missing bands must correlate to the other parent? Okay, so you picked dad one or dad two? Okay, can anyone tell? No? Let's have a look. Let me help you all understand this, right? A child inherits two alleles for a gene. Everyone agree? One allele must come from. One allele must come from. Now, each allele is represented as a band. Because what is an allele? It's a sequence of bases that's been amplified that you can view. Make sense? So each one allele is represented as one band. Okay? Now, remember, because of the restriction enzymes, an allele can be cut into two, and an allele could be two bands at two different places. Okay? But to simplify things, each individual band should represent one piece of genetic information from one parent only. Okay? So what we see here is a band with the mother that the child did not inherit. That makes sense. The child doesn't inherit all the illness from the mother. Okay? But we move to this position here. The child has a band that the mother does not have. So where must that band come from? Or who yeah. must that? Yeah. And all we have to do is draw a horizontal line. We can see that it came from possibly father two. So the way I approach these questions, everyone, first thing I do is identify all the bands that the mother did not pass on to the child. We see a band here. This band could have come from the mother, so we're not going to think about that band. What about these two bands, everyone? Yeah. Now, here you see a bit of an issue because you see the band here is not present in dad two, and the band here is, is present in dad two. So, this could be the case of a mutation. This is a little bit of a weird anomaly, you typically will not see it, especially for HSC questions, but keep it simple for you, right? But mutation can cause that, a new allele subtype, which is only present in the child, okay? Since this band here is present in this individual, but no other bands are present in dad one, for example, this band here is not present, um, and this band here is not present, we can safely say this is probably a new mutation that's happened, okay? And so more than likely what we see is that all the bands that can't be explained by the mother, specifically this one here, um, this one here, passed on from dad too. So the answer to this question, or the best answer, this is a bit of a difficult one because of that last band here, is that father too is most likely the parent of that child. Okay, so the way you interpret these questions is one band equals one allele, and a band can either be inherited from the mother or the father. If it's not inherited from the mother, it must come from the other parent. That's how simple it is to interpret these. Does that make sense? Whereas, did you notice with the crime scene analysis, it's very straightforward. You just look at which sequences match up. Very easy. So more than likely in your exam, you get a paternity testing question. It's a little bit more genetic in your understanding of alleles and inheritance, etc. Okay, very good.